This is ABTV, Animal Bites Television. So I've made it out to New Hampshire to one of the coolest reptile places on the planet. Of course, I'm talking about NERD, New England Reptile Distributors. And today, I'm gonna to be hanging out with some of the true giants, like this reticulated python here named Miss Piggy. Just look at the size of the head on that animal. And this is a relatively older girl that is actually in really good shape as far as not overly fed and obese. Because when you get snakes too large, oftentimes, you end up shortening their life, but there's no doubt that Miss Piggy has some length on her, and some of the retics that Kevin works at here at Nerd are crazy cool. Some of the coolest paint jobs for the most giant snakes on the planet. This is gonna be an awesome day. My name is Kevin McCurley and I'm the Evil Morph God. How long have you been working with reticulated pythons? Uh, since, since the 90s, so basically forever. Yeah, I, I was first obviously keeping them as just, you know, any, any amateur or whatever, but first being able to breed them in the 90s, so I guess, you know, it's one thing to have something, but next thing is to understand it and actually be able to manage it, do correct husbandry and actually breed it and, you know, do all that. So I didn't do that until some point in the 90s. Take a look at this beastie right here. Wow, this was one that really caught my eye as soon as I walked in the room. It happens to be a golden child platinum phantom. Now the golden child is a co-dominant mutation that kind of blows out the animal, typically kind of a darker, like almost a black at sometimes, but certainly a dark brown with kind of a, a nice black stripe down them. And of course the platy gene is the one that produces all that white stuff like ultras and leucistics and all that stuff. And the phantom is also co-dominant that just cleans things up and really bright them up. Now what's interesting about these guys is that as the babies they're more of a brownish tan color and then as they grow up they turn into this almost yellow. I mean that is a cool animal. And can you imagine this thing's probably what maybe eight nine foot. Could you imagine when this thing is 15 16 foot how much brighter it's gonna get because that's one of the things that's really cool about the phantom stuff is as they get older they get even brighter so that is a cool cool animal. Man there's just so many options and color paint jobs when it comes to reticulated pythons. And the fact that they have large litters or large clutches of, you know, 40, 50, 60 eggs, you can certainly get the combinations together much quicker to produce the end results, these incredible looking animals. When you first got into reticulated pythons, did you think that there would be the color array that there are now? No, actually reticulated pythons, that was such a, it's almost a, a static palette. You know, we were looking at like yellow headed, you know, Ambon Islands and, you know, just silvers and stuff like that. And we really didn't have anything, and then the tiger retic, and then the albino, and even then, you know, it, it, it was still it was pretty uh, pretty quiet as far as the morph front, and you didn't you didn't really think any of this. Plus, we didn't really have anything except for like corn snakes or king snakes, and I think you know the python mutations have kind of surpassed a lot of that. But no, I had no idea at all. <laughs> so guys, this is a phantom tiger which are both co-dominant mutations with the tiger <laughs> being being a co-dominant animal when bred together produces a super tiger that's basically patternless with kind of a striping on it and the phantom gene really brightens things up just makes them more vibrant and uh, they're super cool animals i've been vlogging my way through this entire trip too so i want you guys to check out my new vlog channel that's basically just a look inside my life you can check it out the link right here or in the description it's going to be pretty cool we still have a lot of snakes to cover the amazing color mutations and the pattern mutations it's freaking ridiculous it's just going it's going off the rails and i mean just you know just i obviously love things like the cowrie tick that's just it doesn't even make any sense you're talking about an animal that just looks you know supernatural People ask me all the time what my favorite snake is, and I always say there's just no way I could ever pick, but if you really cornered me and asked me what my favorite reticulated python was, I would have to say it's the animal I'm holding right now, at least for now. I mean, maybe the next snake I hold, I'll feel the same way, but the truth is really the cow reticulated python is just the coolest reticulated python on the earth. And it actually broke the internet a couple years ago when Kevin finally produced this guy. Now there's been some 
uh, calico reticulated pythons that have been imported into the country for probably the last 20 years, but none of them have been genetic. And interestingly enough, they were born normal and turned calico as they got older. With these guys, it's actually a genetic mutation. It's an orange ghost stripe bred to a phantom. And now it's an allelic type thing. So by breeding an orange ghost stripe, you can never produce a, a cow. And by breeding a phantom, you can never produce a cow. But it's much like the super stripe in ball pythons where they're allelic. So they share a protein on the same allele and when bred together you produce this incredible animal again the cow reticulated python one of the coolest snakes you'll ever see <laughs> it's just white with speckling on it kind of reminds me a little of those palmetto corn snakes too this is a kick-ass animal do you think that there was one retic morph that like shot the popularity off of retics oh, albino if we're gonna look at all python mutations or just snake mutations if i look at a clutch of albino retics and you get a purple one or a white face and you really look at that, that is clearly one of the nicest albino mutations that we have in, in the world of snakes. Man, this is absolutely a gorgeous animal. And of course, this is a, a golden child ghost genetic stripe. And now Kevin McShirley was really the first person to produce the golden child way back in the day. And I actually remember hanging out in Orlando and seeing at this big reptile show, seeing the golden child for the very first time. And they're really, again, really dark animals, almost a dark brown, almost to black. And the fact that it was a co-dominant mutation right off the bat really incited the reticulated python world. And I think he was selling them at the time for $20,000. And uh, again, you got to be a little careful with reticulated pythons. Even when they're super docile, when you enter their cage like this, they get a little bit cage defensive. So let's go ahead and pull her out and see how she looks out in the light because she is absolutely gorgeous inside this cage. And she's a beastie too. Take a look at this animal right here. Whew. But look at that head. Now, golden child heads typically have that exact look, that kind of cross pattern on their head. And again, a normal golden child is going to have almost like a freckly pattern down its dorsal. You can see a little bit right here, but that orange ghost or orange genetic stripe really blows the pattern out and gives it that like really gold yellow look, which makes it a beautiful, beautiful animal. And again, I can't imagine what this is going to look like. Let's say you breed it to uh, a phantom and get cow golden childs. <laughs> I had to think about that for a while. I mean, can you imagine that? Because again, sometimes golden childs are almost jet black. Can you imagine a jet black and white snake? I mean, like a panda reticulated python? Now that's going to be amazing. <laughs> Remember back in that time when I said that maybe one day they produce a golden child cow? Silly me to think that Kevin didn't already produce a golden child cow because here it is right here. This is the animal and you can see how much darker it is than a normal cow. You've got almost this black and white look. And again, the cows are pretty variable. Some have a lot more white, some have a lot less white. This one's kind of a little bit reduced white. So if they ever get one like this that is like say 50% white, it's gonna be even more impressive. But trust me, never again will I doubt what Kevin McCurley is producing. I've known Kevin McCurley for probably 25 years or so, and the one thing that I probably think is the coolest about him is his crazy names for snakes. When he produces a morph of ball python or reticulated python, there's typically some uh, interesting humor involved in it. And of course, we showed you the cow retics, which kind of makes sense because, you know, you got the holstering cows that are black and white. Uh, this is actually called a moo reticulated python, that's right. So it's definitely related to the cow, but the other thing about Kevin that everybody knows is that certain projects he keeps a little bit secret, because hey, he doesn't want his competition to catch up to him, and between me and you, I don't think his competition is gonna catch up, but anyways, the moo reticulated python is your guess as best as mine. I have no idea what makes it, but it's one cool snake. Well, this isn't exactly a reticulated python, but it certainly is a big snake, and of course, this is a green anaconda. <laughs> I've always absolutely loved them. And I've always said that I want one female green anaconda that I can get really big just as a pet because, you know, unfortunately these guys were added to the Lacey Act and are now on the injunction so you can still ship them, but there's a chance that in the future you won't be able to ship them across state lines. So I've got to get a big green anaconda just to have it because they're so cool. And again, they're obviously more of a boa than a python, but of course the girthiest snake on the planet. And this girl, although she's not a monster like some of the really big ones, I tell you what, she's got some weight on her. I've had 
had an absolute blast dealing with these huge snakes today. I hope you guys have enjoyed it as much as I have. And as always, guys, you've been watching Snake Bites. I love retics and I think lots of people should have them and I, I think they make great captives, but you need to use your brain because a fool with a ball python is nothing compared to a fool with a reticulated python.